Hello students, in this video we will be solving the question answers from chapter 12 of your NCRT that is some natural phenomena. So this is not just a solution, if needed I will also explain the solutions to you. Okay, so let us see one by one. The first question is about uh, selecting the correct option. So question number one, which of the following cannot be charged easily by friction? A plastic scale, a copper rod, an inflated balloon, a woolen cloth. The correct option is a copper rod. Remember anything which is, uh, you know, a non-conductor is charged easily by friction so metal objects are not charged easily by friction they are charged by another method that is called conduction which i have discussed in my lecture of this chapter so if you have a problem understanding this question you can just see the method of charging by conduction so metals good conductors of electric charges they are charged easily by the process of conduction when it comes to friction they are not they cannot be charged easily by friction so correct answer will be copper rod number two when a glass rod is rubbed with a piece of silk cloth. The rod, what happens to the rod? Remember I told you all, whenever a glass rod is rubbed with a piece of silk cloth, it is a convention. It will always acquire a positive charge. That means the glass rod will always become positively charged. So glass rod becomes positively charged, but that means the silk cloth will acquire an opposite charge. That means it will become negatively charged. So which option is the correct one? Uh, option number B becomes positively charged. Why? What becomes the positively charged? The glass rod while the cloth has a negative charge. Right. Now let us go to question number three, which is a true false. So, like charges attract each other. No, like charges repel each other. So, this one is false. A charged glass rod attract a charged plastic straw. Absolutely, a charged glass rod strikes a charged plastic straw because they acquire opposite charges. Number C, lightning conductor cannot protect a building from lightning. False. That is why lightning conductors are used. They are used to protect, uh, they are installed in buildings to protect the building from lightning. Okay. And uh, number D, earthquakes can be predicted in advance. Lightning, cyclones actually can be predicted in advance, but earthquake is a natural phenomena that cannot be predicted in advance. So this answer will be false. Okay. Now, let us come to question number four. Sometimes a crackling sound is heard while taking off a sweater during winters. In fact, at night you may see spark also. So, explain. See, normally sweaters are made up of which material? Wool. Okay. And other inner clothes like shirts, they are made up of cotton and are synthetic fibers like silk or polyester. Okay. Now, due to friction among these two, what happens? Static charges gets accumulated. What happens? Static charges gets accumulated. Accumulate. It. Why? Due to friction. Due to friction. Okay. Now, because these static charges are getting accumulated on the sweater, while taking off the sweater, you see an electric discharge occurs between the sweater and the body, which results in forming of sparks and crackling sound. Okay. Now, question number five. Explain why a charged body loses its charge if we touch it with our hand. I told you that our body is a 
conductor. So if we touch a charged body, what will happen? Charges from that body will flow through our body to the earth. Alright, so always remember, human body is a good conductor of electricity. Human body is a human body is a good conductor of electricity. Okay, so uh, a charged body loses its charge when we touch with it with our hand because what happens? Charges get transferred through our body to the earth. And you know what is this process of transferring charges from our body to the earth is called? Earthing, right? So, number six. Name the scale on which the destructive energy of an earthquake is measured. So, what is the name of the scale on which we measure it? It is called Richter scale. R-I-C-H-T-E-R. -E Richter scale. It measures the destructive energy or the magnitude of the earthquake. Okay. And next is an earthquake measures 3 on the scale. Would it be recorded by a seismograph? Is it likely to cause any damage? Yes, it will be recorded by a seismograph because seismograph, you know, it records any kind of uh, disturbance that is caused on the earth. But will it cause any damage? No, it is not likely. It is of very low intensity. So it will not cause any damage. So the answer to the first part, would it be recorded on the seismograph? Yes, it will be recorded on the seismograph. Is it likely to cause any damage? No, as it is of low intensity. Low intensity. So what intensity of earthquake causes damage? Intensity which is 7 above in magnitude on the Richter scale causes damage to the life property. Okay, life and property. Suggest so three measures to protect ourselves from lightning. Now, what are the three measures you can take? There are actually many measures that you can take to protect yourselves from lightning. It is given, it is mentioned in your book. We can mention any three like uh, uh, open space is very dangerous. So, take cover under a building. Okay. Thunderstorm is an indication to rush for safer space. So if you hear a thunderstorm, just rough, rush uh, uh, to a safer place. And uh, also uh, during thunderstorm, do not stand under tall trees. Okay. So there are many. I'm mentioning few of them like one, rush to safer place. During thunderstorm. You can take down from your book, no problem. Number two is, do not stand under tall trees. These are when you are outside, right? And uh, take shelter under buildings. And do not carry umbrella because it is dangerous. If you are inside your cars or inside any vehicle, stay inside, keeps the windows closed. So there are many which we have already discussed in our lecture video. Okay, you have to suggest any three over here. Number eight, explain why a charged balloon is repelled by another charged balloon, whereas an uncharged balloon is attracted by another charged balloon. Okay, now. When you are charging two balloons, what is happening? They have similar charges on the surface, right? And we know that like charges repel each other. Like charges repel each other. So since those two balloons have like charges, they are going to repel each other. But when you bring an uncharged balloon near a charged balloon, so one is charged, suppose one of the balloon is charged, 
positively, suppose, and the other one is uncharged, neutral. So what is happening when you're bringing it close, this charged balloon is inducing an opposite charge on this because of which they get attracted. Okay, so remember when you bring an uncharged balloon near a charged balloon, what will happen? They will attract each other because we know that unlike charges attract each other. Whereas if you bring two charged balloons, they must be having same charges, so they will repel each other. Now question number nine. Describe with the help of a diagram an instrument which can be used to detect the charged body. So here you have to draw the diagram of a simple electroscope. It is given in your book. Uh, if you want me to draw it, I'm drawing it here. Let me find a space for that. Here we can draw, yes. We have a lot of space. So we can take a jar with a small opening like this cover it with a cardboard take a paper clip make a hole into it and there will be two aluminium foils hanging here now you can bring any charged body touch it with this metal uh, paper clip and then you know if the body is charged charges are going to transfer and these paper uh, these aluminium foils are going to show repulsion if you bring an uncharged object and touch it, nothing is going to happen. All right. So this is a simple diagram which is also given in your book. List three states in India where earthquakes are more likely to strike. So we have Gujarat, Rajasthan and Himachal Pradesh. Gujarat. There are many actually mentioning three. Uh, Rajasthan. Himachal Pradesh. Some parts of South India also. Okay. Now, suppose you are outside your home and an earthquake strikes. What precaution would you take to protect yourself? So, if you are outside your home and if there is an earthquake, what are you going to do to protect yourself from that earthquake? So, firstly, uh, you know, you should find a clear spot which is away from the building, which is away from trees, which is away from overhead power lines and drop to the ground. Okay, firstly. And second, uh, if you are in a car or a bus, just do not come out. Ask the driver to go to a clear spot and just ask him to draw, uh, drive slowly. Okay, all right. Do not drive near buildings or, you know, just ask him to drive slowly and go to a clear spot. Number 12. The weather department has predicted that a thunderstorm is likely to occur on a certain day. Suppose, okay. Suppose you have to go out on that day. Would you carry an umbrella? No, not at all. Carrying an umbrella is not safe. Okay, I'm writing it down. Carrying umbrella is not a good idea idea at all during thunderstorm during sorry thunderstorm we do carry umbrella during thunderstorm and rain, but you know, you should not during thunderstorm, heavy thunderstorm, just avoid carrying an umbrella, okay? Uh, the speed of wind will blow away the umbrella firstly. Also, secondly, you know, lightning can strike an umbrella. So, it is a dangerous thing to do, okay? So, that's all for the exercise questions. I hope you all have understood. If you have not understood anything, you can refer to the lecture of this chapter and you can also mention it in the comment section. I'll definitely respond. Thank you and take care.